Now, what kind of a job attracts people with psychopathic tendencies? The psychologist Oliver James says research suggests that chief executives and senior management are four times more likely to be psychopathic than the average person. Oliver James joins us now from Oxford. Oliver, first of all, what do you mean by the term psychopathic? Uh, cold, ruthless, unempathic, amoral. But it's not just psychopathy, it's also Machiavellianism, compulsive game playing, moving people around like pawns on a chessboard, and narcissism, me, 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 self-obsessed grandiosity. This dark triad of traits, psychopathy, Machiavellianism and narcissism go together and there's much more of them amongst senior managers than the general population, as you mentioned in the introduction, and there is more than there used to be. That is, people uh, are generally more like the, the triadic traits, psych psychopathic, narcissistic and Machiavellian, than used to be the case in the English-speaking world compared with, say, 30 years ago. Is that because, in order to make it to the top of the corporate tree, you actually need those traits? You got it. The perception of your performance has become much more important than the reality of what you've actually achieved for the corporation that you work for or the, or the public service. So uh, the, the, the fact that we're now living in a popular, you know, the, most of the population work in service sector industries where it's really hard to measure what exactly you've contributed during your day's work. And as a result of that, you know, whereas once upon a time you produced a certain number of widgets per day and were paid a certain amount per widget, today it's very hard to measure and your relationship with your boss, particularly, and your peers, but particularly your boss, whether you, your boss likes you, how your boss perceives your performance is much more important than uh, what you've actually done. And that's why my book is called Office Politics uh, at, uh, how to thrive in a world of lying, backstabbing and dirty tricks. We, my, my advice to everyone is to get real, get with the, get with, get with, get with the program, understand that we now live in a world where it's really important to uh, be deliberate and self-conscious about using office political skills. So if a person's, the perception of how somebody is performing in their job has become more important than how they're actually performing. That provides an opportunity for people to deceive. But surely we'll all be found out in the end at some point. Absolutely not. A lot of people never get found out and just get to the top and stay at the top. Uh, the reality is that all of us, let's, let's, and let's not get too sort of uh, on our high horse about this, uh, all of us use wiles in our everyday life, whether it's at home or at work, to try and get our way. For resources are finite. There's a limited amount of promotions that can be made, money that can be handed out as bonuses. And we're competing for these. And of course, even the most self-righteous person actually, whether they're honest with themselves or not, you know, tells lies. One in five communications across the board at home and at work, but particularly at work, obviously, are untruths. Of course, some of them are diplomatic, uh, tactful comments where, you know, you might say to your girlfriend, you look lovely tonight, um, you know, when, when actually you can't stand the dress she's wearing, but you know you're going to get lucky if you do say that. Well, we all do that. And uh, let's, let's be honest with ourselves. And actually, let's be more deliberate about it. And you can be on the side of good. You know, uh, Bob Geldorf would never have got live aid off the ground or Mandela would have never achieved what he did had they not been capable of a measure of uh, the triadic traits, including psychopathy, ruthlessness, detachment. Some of the traits of psychopaths are not all bad. Uh, there, was a, there was a very amusing survey done in the UK which showed that the most psychopathic people, sure enough, surprise, surprise, are CEOs but, and their lawyers and people working in the, in the media. Not radio, you'll be glad to hear, but uh, television, uh, but also surgeons. Now, you wouldn't want a surgeon who started weeping because he has such a personal relationship with you as he tried to operate on your heart because he loves you so much and he's worried it's going to go wrong. You want a surgeon who's going to pick the right vein to open or close, uh, do the job detached clinically, and that involves, you know, that's one of the characteristics of psychopathy. I'd be worried if my surgeon was a psychopath, though. Uh, You're saying why? I shouldn't. I shouldn't be. 
don't be. No, in fact, be grateful for the fact he may be a psychopath across the board in all his relationships, or he may just be a psych, psych have some psychopathic traits when he's being a surgeon. People are very complicated, and the, these psychopathic traits are on on a on a spectrum. We we have you know all of us have measures of narcissism, Machiavellianism, and psychopathy. It's just a matter of degree. So how does this affect uh, a business? Let's say if these are traits that are actually necessary and becoming more necessary to make it to the top of the corporate ladder, how does that affect the business? Well, uh, you need to factor this in as a, as a senior manager in considering who to promote. Uh, for example, chameleonism is enormously effective, you know, uh, that is imitating other people's language, their ideas, their even their, their manner of dress. And chameleons are often quite successful. And indeed, flattery, if you want a tip for how to be successful at office politics, the simplest thing is flattery. Uh, and if you, but, but however, there's no magic box of office political tricks. You have to use the right tactic on the right person at the right time. Now, in terms of an overall business, uh, obviously... If you have people devoting most of their time to trying to shaft each other rather than trying to do fruitful work for the business and indeed trying to shaft the opposition outside the business, uh, then that will uh, you know, reduce ultimately the effectiveness of the business and reduce profits. Uh, so you need to try and create an environment in which office politics is acceptable, is a normal part of every day, day life, but is not the main activity of, of the employees trying to shaft each other. So where and does that where leave? Where does that leave the employees? There, there are employees who want to get ahead in an organisation. And what you're saying is they have to get with the programme and adopt some of these traits. And then there are others who just want to get by in an organisation, survive with a boss that they feel is like that. Yeah. And uh, if you've got a boss like that, uh, you know, uh, I try to describe in the book how you can identify whether your parent, whether, whether your parent, your, whether your boss is uh, psychopathic, narcissistic, or primarily psychopathic, narcissistic, or Machiavellian, and then offer strategies with which you can deal with them. So, for example, with, if you have a narcissistic boss, is somebody who's primarily a me, 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 grandiose person who's actually very fragile, who's, who's doing that to compensate for feelings of powerlessness and worthlessness. If you flatter them cleverly enough, you will find it very easy to get get on with them. The trouble is they're quite obnoxious and annoying. So uh, it's get the, that you, you have to consider the fact that you don't really like this person. Whenever you think of uh, a boss, you know, uh, in, in a mass media terms, people obviously think of David Brent, the, the, the character in The Office. What, what's your psychological profile of him? <laughs> well, he's a classic example of somebody who has these triadic traits. But, of course, plenty of people have these traits and are not very, you know, are just obnoxious. And they don't get to the top at all because they're so unpleasant. Uh, and, indeed, he is... Uh, so wafer thin, in, he's just more motivated and ambitious. In the end, getting to the top, I, I remember talking to a famous chief executive in this country who, who presented the TV series Troubleshooter, a guy called Sir John Harvey Jones. And I said to him, what makes the difference between the people who get to the very top and the people near the top? And he said, they want it more. So in the end, you know, success is the product of, uh, you know, having high ambition. But does this and, ultimately, this way of conducting business and, and rewarding certain traits, does it not ultimately damage the business in the long run? It's got to affect the profit. It, businesses like this could ultimately implode. There is a real problem that uh, we live in, you know, in the English speaking world, we're in, we're in what I call the selfish capitalist free market economic system where it's deregulated. And that that's one of the main reasons why there's been a huge increase in the amount of triadic people generally and at the top and why office politics have become so important along with the service, the fact that we're in service industries. Now, uh, we certainly have a problem that there are too many, so to speak, Blofelds and not enough James Bonds. Both of them are psychopaths, but James Bond de de you know, devotes his psychopathy to trying, you know, to, to the greater good, even though he's ultimately incredibly selfish and just wants to get the girl. He doesn't really have any close intimates, etc. Now, uh, to, trying to turn the, the current crop of uh, more or less crooked people at the top of society, the, the politicians, the, the, the people in financial services, the the, the CEOs, that they're more or less blow felt like. And that's why the world economy crashed very, very nearly completely. And why so many businesses, you know, you, you, you need to be able to identify the, the kind of 
uh, triadic person is going to crash your okay. whole company. Well, maybe, and maybe it does all come down to psychology in the end. Uh, Oliver James, a psychologist and author of Office Politics, How to Thrive in a World of Lying, Backstabbing and Dirty Tricks. Thanks for joining me on the programme. That's all we have time for this week. You can download a podcast or listen back anytime by going to rte.ie forward slash radio or to our own webpage, rte.ie forward slash the business. Marion Finucane is next. George Lee is back in the chair next week. Thanks for listening. Bye bye. The Business on RTE Radio 1 with Vodafone, the smarter network for your startup business. Vodafone.ie forward slash